4.3, you want to check out 4.3. Let me minimize this. I, I, can I, I'm going to start with 4.3. I'll just pick one question from each section. Okay, look. The following data represent the number of calories per serving and the number of grams of sugar per serving for a random sample of high fiber cereals. So you have calories up top, you got sugar on the bottom. A says a scatter diagram of the data is shown. What type of relation appears to exist between calories and sugar content? Uh, no relation. Those dots are just like nothing, right? There appears to, there appears to be little or no relationship, right? Also, determine the correlation coefficient between calories and sugar content. So for that, I'm just gonna, it's so easy. You just click this and all of chapter four, you go to stat, regression, simple linear. That's all of chapter four. So X, Y, press compute and you're done. So the correlation coefficient is negative 0.311. And that is it, negative 0.311. That would be rounding to. Three decimal places, all right. Determine the critical value for the correlation coefficient. For that, we'll probably click this. Notice that n equals one, two, three, four, five. So the critical value is 0.878 right there. So we put in 0 0.878, 0 0.878, boom. Now, what else should we do here? Um, I guess that's it, I think we're done with that one. So that's 4.3. I'll go to 4.2 real quick. Assignments, 4.2 right here. Let's click number six. It says, let's see if I can read it. Uh, all right, an engineer wants to determine how the weight of a gas powered car, X, affects gas mileage, Y. So X is the explanatory variable. Why is the response variable? The accompanying data represent the weights of various domestic cars and their miles per gallon in the city for the most recent model year. Let's see. Part A, find the least squares regression line treating weight as the explanatory variable and miles per gallon as the response variable. So easy, easy, easy. Click this. There's the data. Let me make this smaller so you can see a little bit better. Click this rectangle, open the stack crunch, and do the same thing we just did. Just go to stat, regression, simple linear. Sorry, stat, regression, simple linear, X and Y. It said to use weight as the explanatory variable. So why we're putting weight with X and compute, and that's it. So how do you read this thing? this equation here how do you read it well whatever is with X is the is the slope see how there's an X next to it it's like number weight weight is the X variable so this would be the slope and whatever number is by itself would be the Y intercept so notice how this answer area it gives us like a box X so that box is the slope and this box is the Y intercept so I can just put in what are we rounding to? Wow, five decimal places? Okay. A little excessive, don't you think? Let's see, I'm gonna close this. Try to get the press copy here for the slope. I think the slope goes here. I think that was the slope. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna cross out the score. I think that's five decimal places. I'm gonna grab this slope. Control C, go over here to the slope, press Control V, five decimal places. And by the way, it's negative. So one, two, three, four. Change this to a four, make sure you round correctly. Go to the front, put a negative sign. That's it, check your answer. And we got it wrong. Why did we get it wrong? I don't know. Let's double check. And let's see if we did anything wrong. This was the slope, it's negative, 0.008. One, three, we're supposed to round to five decimal places, right? Round the constant to one decimal place. Oh, it wants us to round the constant to one decimal place. I didn't see that. Dang, that's hard to round that. So that's going to be 48.0. 48.0. Let's try it. Let's it's see if this is right. It's worked. It worked. I didn't see that part of the directions where it said 
round, where did it say? It said, yeah, I wanted us to round the constant to a different than the, the slope. So that was weird. Five decimal places and one decimal place. So what were you going to say, Charlie? I have a question. Sure, what's your question? So it says round the x coefficient to five decimal places is needed. So that was the, for the first box. And then round the constant to one decimal place is needed was for the second box. Correct. The, yes, okay. the slope. Uh, let's see the x coefficient. Yeah, that's the slope. Yeah, it doesn't say slope. It just says the x coefficient. So this is the coefficient in front of x. Yeah, and the constant is this number. The thing by itself is considered a constant because it doesn't change with with respect to x. Now, I was, uh, huh? I was just gonna correct your mistake. Um, for you, but you, you did it before I did the activity. All right, interpret the slope and y-intercept. The slope, the interpretation is, if I can maybe make this smaller so you can see more of it. The slope interpretation, well, the slope is right here. So what are the variables? Weight and what? Gas mileage. For every pound, the gas mileage goes down by this amount. That's it. That's the slope intercept. For every pound added to the weight of the car, gas mileage in the city will decrease by. Now, you gotta be careful here with the slope. You gotta actually put the positive of the slope because it already, you already said, you're already saying going down. So even though the slope is negative, we're gonna make it positive because we say the word down. Sorry, it's kind of weird to get in here, but we say the word down. The guy, it says decrease, it says the word decrease. So that is the negative sign. So I'm just going to make this positive. Now, as far as rounding goes, what does it say to round to? Anything? It says use the answers from part A. Okay, so to the 4. So I'm just going to go get rid of this 4. I think, is it like that? 008134 or is it 14? Yeah, 14. So I can get rid of that 3. Using the answers from A. All right. Okay. There's our slope. Uh, what else? Is, how come we can't check our answer? Oh, a weightless car will get. Yeah, that's the interpretation of the y-intercept. A weightless car. Well, that's impossible. It is not appropriate to in interpret the slope or the y-intercept. No. It is not appropriate to interpret the y-intercept. You see that? It says it is not appropriate to interpret the y-intercept because there's no such thing as a weightless car. That we don't make weightless cars. Not yet. Not in our dimension, maybe in four dimensions. But here I'm gonna change this like this. Control B. I'm gonna pick C as my answer. Oh man, I gotta change this to four. Uh is it one four? I think. Now let's check our answer. That's it. Does that make sense? I'm just interpreting the slope and the y-intercept. Not a big, big deal, but a certain gas-powered car weighs that much and gets 18 miles per gallon. Is the miles per gallon of this car above average or below average for cars of this weight? Ooh, good question. I like it. What we're going to have to do for this question is to find the predicted gas mileage and see if it's above or below 18. So 18 is the actual gas mileage. We're going to subtract, we're going to compare that to what we predict. So we're going to use the regression model, assuming the correlation is strong enough. We don't have, I guess it's assuming that it wants us to use the correlation for prediction. But when I look at this value, I have a strong, strong correlation, 96.3. So the correlation is pretty strong. So I, I'm allowed to make my prediction at this point. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and make my prediction. The Lakers will win by 24. There's my prediction. <laughs> All right, watch. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Desmos to the rescue. Here we go. Desmos, Desmos. I'm going to plug in my regression equation, which is right here. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, well, maybe not. Why? equals to or actually I'll just say like 47.9999 oh, this is weird how should I round minus 0 0.00813 
8.0967 times 36, what was it? What was our prediction for? Uh, what was that question back here? So many tabs. So many, so many tabs. 35.31. Okay, so I'll put 35.31. I'm plugging into the equation. I have a prediction of 19.26. All right, the estimated average miles per gallon for the car of the weight is 19 points. What do we want to round to? Round to three decimal places. 260. Be careful on rounding on that one. That's tricky. The miles per gallon of this car is above average because it's above 18. See that? So that's a good question. We did the prediction and voila. And it's wrong for some crazy reason. Let's see why. Probably something to do with rounding. Let's see. A certain gas power car weighs 35, 31. All right, watch. They probably want us to use the same numbers up here. So watch. I'm going to change this to 48. So my answer is more accurate. I'm very precise, right? I have all my precision here. So obviously 19.25 is, is very accurate. So let's make it less accurate and let's see if we get the right answer, which is really weird. 48, maybe we wanna, we wanna use that exact model that, that, they, that we wrote down as the answer from before. So if I change this to a four, let's see if I get the right answer now. Well, is that the same? Now it's 258, 258. So I think it changed. 19.258, see that little difference? Five, eight, now let's check the answer. Okay, one second, let's see what's up. The estimated average miles per gallon for cars of this weight is that. The miles per gallon of this car is, is above average. Yes, it is above average because we're getting more miles per gallon. Oh wait, oh no, it's below because the actual car is getting 18. See that? The actual car is getting 18 miles per gallon and we're predicting 19. Therefore, the miles per gallon of this car is below. Does that make sense? Tricky, right? The miles per gallon is actually 18. For the actual car, it's getting 18 miles per gallon. We predict 19.258. I wonder if the 19 is gonna be wrong now that I changed it, but let's see. And it was right. Now I'm curious though, if I change that, what they would accept on that. Like, I'm curious if I left my original answer, would they accept that? Probably. But anyways, now, so we're still on 4.2. Would it, we're going through this fast, a little quick tutorial, we don't have much time. Would it be reasonable to use the least squares regression line to predict the miles per gallon of a hybrid gas and electric car? Don't worry about this one. This is weird, we're just comparing two different types of cars so probably no it's a different type of car yeah. probably just no right different type of car all right we're done with that one we're kind of breezing through this stuff real quick we don't have much time and leave this shoot what happened to 4.1 now where did 4.1 go you wanted me to do 4.1 right yes but i'm losing it where is it over here let's go to assignments so i did one question from 4.3 one question from 4.2 now one question from 4.1 and we make sure, what's up, Melissa? What class are you in? Um, I'm in your statistics class. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Perfect, because this, this will help you. All right, look, I don't know, I, I just randomly picked this one. Is this okay to do this one? Or are you guys good with this one? Kind of just randomly picked it. So we got we got commute times and well-being score. Do you want me to do a different one? All right, I'll do it if nobody said no. Which variable, which variable is the explanatory variable? Prop, well, it's commute time, right? Because that's going to dictate your well-being. So explanatory variable is commute time. Let's see if that's it. That's right. No. How about this one? The explanatory variable is commute time. Let's click that one. That's right. I didn't read the end of it, so. You have to read the whole thing. That's yeah. a mistake I make all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to read anything because I only have eight minutes left and I gotta end my I gotta end this. Draw a scatter diagram of the data. Well, I don't have time to make a scatter diagram. Actually, I do because this is so easy. All of chapter four is 
in one button. Stat, regression, simple linear. And now if I press, oh shoot, I gotta, I gotta pick this stuff. Commute time is explanatory, well-being is response. Now if I click this arrow, boom, I get that. See that? All right, so that's cool. I can use that to figure out which one it is. Uh, okay, looks like that. You got one above. The bottom one is like on the line. You got this little three triplet below. Okay, let's see which one is that triplet below. Uh, which ones look like that? Okay, only this one looks like it. A, right? That's the only one that looks like it. All right, so like determine the linear correlation coefficient. Well, that's easy. That's in the results, yeah. yeah. So that's a negative not 0.9773. Negative 0.9773, okay. Negative 0.9773, round to three decimal places. All right. Okay, next one. Does a linear relation exist between the commute time? Well, probably yes, because you com you have to compare that number, 977, you compare that number to the critical value. So I already know the answer is going to be yes. Because the, man, we gotta read? Why do we have to read? Who, who's making us read? What's up with that? I don't wanna read. Yes, 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 these all say yes. Uh, they're negatively associated because the R is positive. No, they're negatively associated because R is negative. So it's this one. And the critical value for our sample size. Now watch this, you see this sample size? It's seven, seven, see that? So if I go to the critical value and I go to seven, I see 0.754, see that? 0.754, and that's it, we're done.